a fun little anecdote for you guys. Never have I ever watched a single Fast and Furious movie. Seriously, true story, this huge billion dollar franchise that's been around for like 20 years and I, Luke Hairfield, film vlogger, haven't watched a single one. Well, that was until last night. I got a last minute invite to a screener of Fast and Furious 9, The Fast Saga. God, it's a bit of a mouthy title, isn't it? But yeah, because I've been so starved for mindless, bombastic, big screen escapism, I thought, fudge it, why not? If it's good enough for the Cannes Film Festival, then it's good enough for me to review. It's time for me to talk about Fast and Furious 9. As someone who openly admits to never having any prior knowledge of the Fast and Furious franchise, I'm just gonna be up front, hold my hands up, and say that I'm not gonna review Fast 9 by comparing it to the previous eight films, nor am I going to dive into the backstory and history of the previous eight movies because, well, I don't know it, and also, um, I, I wouldn't do it justice if I tried. So I'm just going to give you an objective review of Fast and Furious 9 from the point of view of someone who has never watched a single Fast and Furious movie, okay? I thought Fast 9 was rip-roaring redonkulous. It's not what I would classify as a great movie, but it sure as hell entertaining. I'm so glad there was an open bar at the screener last night because I honestly don't know how I would have watched this movie sober. This film doesn't just ask you to leave your brain at the door, it asks you to leave it back in 2020. It's balls to the walls, pedal to the metal, fun, but as a first time viewer, I did have my fair share of problems with it. It's obvious that this is a franchise that has become so huge that writers Daniel Casey and Justin Lin, Justin Lin also directed this film by the way, They've had to up the ante each time they make one of these films when it comes to the action set pieces and stunts. According to Tyrese Gibson's character, Roman, they've taken out cars, trains, tanks, submarines. So after all that, where do you go from there? Well, the answer apparently is space and magnets. In the words of Jesse Pinkman, Yeah, bitch! Magnets! I don't actually know if the other Fast and Furious films are as self-aware as this one, but it kind of feels like Tyrese Gibson's character is like the honest trailer guy, a character that's purposely put there to point out to the audience that we know how utterly ridiculous this story is, we don't obey the laws of physics, none of the characters have a scratch on them after surviving things that no human could, <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyways, because why not? It's a movie designed to entertain, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna entertain you. So it's actually kind of hard to criticize a film which is already criticizing itself. But what? Are we just supposed to give this film a free pass for all its faults because it's meta? I know that anybody that goes to see a Fast and Furious film isn't going for the artistic value, <laughs> they're going for the action sequences, but as a piece of filmmaking, it does have its problems. I mean, the plot for one is about as generic and formulaic as they come. In this film, Torito, once again played by Vin Diesel and his chosen family are on the hunt for a MacGuffin called Project Ares. Basically, all you need to know about this Project Ares is that it's a weapon that once assembled will cause a lot of bad stuff and they have to find it before Dom's long, long, long lost brother, Jacob, played in this film by John Cena. And no, that's not a spoiler, folks. It's in the trailer. Yeah, they have to find it before he does or bad stuff will happen, okay? It's very by the numbers. It's, it's a very basic narrative. I also thought this film had way too many characters. I couldn't keep up with how many supporting characters there were. There were just dozens of them. Some of them just showing up for a cameo like Helen Mirren's Queenie. But yeah, if you ask me to name all the characters on the Fast and Furious 9 poster, I couldn't even do one third of them. I thought there was a lot of lousy dialogue too. Charlize Theron gets some absolute stinkers, like when she compares this Scandinavian guy Otto to Yoda, as well as comparing John Cena's Jacob to Genghis Khan's less famous brother. All I could do was chuckle derisively because some of the dialogue was just so bad. The acting as well, 
not a whole lot of like going on here. <laughs> Nobody is here for the critical acclaim, are they? They're here for the paycheck. And the action sequences as well. Don't get me wrong, they are a lot of fun to watch. It's just, they are so beyond unrealistic. Like, there's suspension of disbelief, and then there's the Fast and Furious franchise. In this film alone, you've got rocket cars in space, John Cena doing the world's longest zip line through Edinburgh. You've got people catching other characters with their car bonnets as if they were crash mats. You've got cars swinging like Tarzan on vines through a jungle. And let's not forget the magnet mobile, which somehow doesn't injure a single pedestrian, even though there's cars and washing machines and appliances flying through the streets. But yeah, this is a film where Everyone walks away without a scratch on them, and nobody's ever even heard of Whiplash. If this is what they come up with for the ninth film, then God only knows what they're gonna do for the tenth film, because I didn't think you could get more out of this world than literally going out of this world. Cars in space? Really? <laughs> but yes, there will be a tenth film, guys, that is a mid-credits scene. Make sure to stick around for that. So yeah, this film is completely devoid of logic. I mean, how have they gone eight films and none of the characters seem to know that the lead character has a brother? Did it just never come up? Hmm, okay. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Honestly, probably not. I'm not saying it's a bad film, guys. It's just this isn't a film that I would personally put on to be entertained by. It's just not my cup of tea, but I'm glad I've seen it. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I am going to say yes. I'm going to recommend this to anybody that wants to just turn off their brain and watch a loud, dumb, action-packed, summary blockbuster movie. It's not gonna change your life, but it will entertain you for two and a half hours. And question number three, what score do I give it out of 10? Fast 9 knows exactly what it is. It's not trying to be anything more than a fun action movie. There's a lot going on and also very little, but it is entertaining and sometimes all we want is to be entertained. So I'm going to give Fast and Furious 9, The Fast Saga, a score of six out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. One bloke who doesn't actually know much about the Fast and Furious franchise. I'd love to hear what you think of Fast 9. Where does it come for you in your Fast and Furious rankings? Is it on the top end, the bottom end, somewhere in the middle? Whatever you have to say about this film, do let me know in that comment section down below. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, all those links in that video description down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Carefield, and I'll see you next time.